The Square Ball Podcast. Hello, welcome to the show. The return of propaganda. Dan Michael and Moscow here for the new season. Um, you alright? Yeah, I think so. You know, your, you know, your voice sounds better. It's, I'm getting there, thank you, yes. Um, slowly but surely. You know you've got to do here at the start of the show, as mentioned. Wills, probate. And conveyancing. I like how it catches you just very slightly. No, no, I didn't that time. Unaware. I was just giving it dramatic pause. Uh, who does those services, those uh, legal services, among many? Levi Solicitors. Have you seen their new advert, by the way? I have, yep. It says, Wills, probate and conveyancing and more legal services. <laughs> I think they've done it as a script for me, more or less. Um, remember to quote the square ball to claim your discount as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or you can go to levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. It's not just Wills, probate and conveyancing. They also do... Other legal services. Exactly, that's all you need to say. Yeah. All, all the all the big ones, all, all the, the others, favourites. All yeah. the, others, the commercial ones. The, the residential uh, ones. Yeah. The uh, dispute resolution ones. Mm-hmm. And uh, 10% discount on your legal fees. LeviceListers.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Propaganda. This is where we find out what's been said in the football world. Normally we would launch headlong, two-footed into um, the game itself. Before we do that, let's talk about those predictions that have been circulating, shall we? And start with the great bunch of lads, are we going to say? Not the top 20. Mm. Yeah. Oh, these lads are spot on. I actually spoke to um, Ali, who works at Not The Top 20 a bit over the summer. Nice lad. Is that why they've said we're going to finish top? Um, (laughs) Spoiler alert. (laughs) The key here for me is that Leeds' relegation for me was a process of of the wrong recruitment at the the wrong time. You know, Jorginho Rutter is a case of that where where needing to board off relegation, they spent £30 million on a striker that, they, that fans were then told wasn't ready for first-team football. What that means is that they have a lot of players who are young, talented, destined for the top-level players who probably aren't going to be picked off this summer, coupled with a new own, ownership group who seem intent on retaining some of those players. You know, Willie Nonto, if he is there this season, will be one of the standout players in the Championship in the EFL this season, possibly the standout. Already rejecting bids from Everton for his services, seemingly with no desire to let him go. To add to that, you've got Somerville, Sinistiera. Um, they've already added Ampadu, which I think is a really shrewd signing. I think he's going to play holding midfield for them rather than centre-back, somebody who's going to distribute the ball really well. Um, and the aforementioned Rutter, who, again, you've got a £30 million striker playing up front. There's no way he's going to be going anywhere because they're not going to recoup that fee. Scored eight goals when he was 19 in the Bundesliga. So it's kind of the perfect crime where almost poor recruitment has meant that, in my eyes at least, if you look at the profile of the, the Norwich side that went up, under Farker, the Burnley side from last season. It's this profile of young, technically gifted players who are able to develop within the championship rather than necessarily going into a Premier League side where they're under the cosh the whole time and can't really get a foothold in the game. They still have Liam Cooper, a centre back, uh, Luke Ayling, a full back. Um, you know, these are players who have won this league already before. It's just a, it's almost not good enough compared to Southampton and and uh, Leicester have all of their key players poached and an ownership group have already shown they're willing to to open the wallet and spend on, on Ampadu. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm actually fairly bullish <laughs> that Leeds should be able to hit the ground running here and I think a best set to um, under a manager who, I, who we know is capable of building a dominant um, side at a championship level, I think Leeds should be favourites to win the league. Um, they're not at the moment, but I think they should be. Work for you? I kind of agree. Well, I mean, I knew all that. <laughs> the perfect uh, just, crime. I enjoyed that as a description yeah. of, of good, uh, Victor good. Alter's transfer policy. Well, it did mention poor recruitment has actually worked in our favour. So maybe that was the grand plan all along. Hey, And good young players. Thank who you, have, Victor. Who have not been picked off yet, um, like Ian Pervader, for mm. example. Yeah. I mean, well, it has brought those people back into the fold, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah Which is it's, good. It's the one part of of that uh, grand disaster that does seem to have kind of worked because I vaguely remember the people running the club saying that sort of the insurance against relegation was that we'll have all these youngsters. Um, I don't think part of it was these youngsters who are so overpriced, nobody will want them. <laughs> um, but that was always the kind of thing of like, we, we'll um, recoup what we need to avoid going bust from the first team players and then um, hope that these youngsters will be good enough for the championship, which they should be because, I mean, you know, we should have beaten Cardiff with that, with a bunch of children. Um, so I don't hold out much fear of letting Pervader run riot. I was looking back at the 
kind of the team that started the opening day. You know the, that glorious day when Bates had gone and Luke Murphy scored. Mm. Like, look at that team. Brighton Christ. Hove Albion, where are they now? Hey, Christ, it was dire that team. Like you, you look at that and you think this is a completely, completely different world that we're in now to that one. So yeah, let's just go up. Yep, fine. Um, we love that, don't we? The, not the top twenty podcast. Great um, non Premier League EFL podcast. Not listen to it. S- second tier pod. Not listen. I'm to not it. a fan of the Daniel Farker appointment. Did a great job at Norwich in the Championship, but his tactical naivety was brutally exposed in the Premier League twice. Has since had a poor season at Borussia Mönchengladbach. Gladbach. Is he the same manager as the one we saw last time he was in the Championship? Who knows? I think it's too easy to look at his Championship record and say he'll be an obvious success. Really important to remember as well, it took a full year for him to get going with Norwich. The owners will want to get promoted straight away. And I imagine they won't hang around if things aren't going well. So I'm not a fan of the managerial appointment. The squad has varying degrees of quality and multiple players are trying to force their way out, which I think will leave the atmosphere at the club a bit raw. Hmm? Bastards. Did you say we finished eighth? Something, yeah. Yeah, something like that. It's got to do with him. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's all like, I don't like this appointment. I'm not convinced by this. I don't think that it's got to do with you. Don't support Leeds. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's called the second tier pods that they're talking about teams that are in the second tier. Yeah, but this is, like he's talking as if it's, as if we've created a problem for him. It's you know, it's not his life. <laughs> this is true. This, this is, is players our... players forcing themselves out of Leeds are gonna create a poisonous atmosphere. Just stay out of it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, it's too easy to say Daniel Farquhar will be good because he was good in the championship before. It was really easy as well to say he'll be bad because he was bad in the Premier League. It's both easy. Yeah. You've just gone like two easy options. Shut up. Don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> if Daniel Farquhar's terrible, there's going to be the, the owners want to hang around. They'll act. They'll act. They'll act. So, like, do not affect you. And I, I do think it's a two-year thing they've got their eye on. They want to do it within two years. Obviously, we'd like to do it straight away. But I also think it's like, if you're going to put a manager in into the championship... What better manager to do it than somebody who has won it twice? If somebody like, you know, we put Bielsa in before, which was a maverick move, you know, we really pushed the boat out, went nuts. But if you're going to pick somebody else, you know, I think somebody yeah. who's won it twice before on on not a huge budget, probably yeah. a sensible, you know. He's probably like the the, the the most sensible, like uh, Russell Martin at Southampton. Exciting new way of playing and seems to be on the up, but he's not got the track record of winning something. And the same with the guy at Leicester. Could be an absolutely fantastic Manager has learned from the best, but again, I think this is his first full time managerial job. Why are you bothered about Leicester? Well, it's, exactly. not your, I'm not. it's not your problem. And then when he comes down to, uh, get Russell then, Martin's name out of your mouth. But then when he comes down to this guy <laughs> saying, you know, if um, if things aren't going well, then Farquhar will be under pressure, we're like, yeah, that's like some of the most banal insight that's <laughs> possible. I but, really oh, like how annoyed you are by this. If the, if the team are losing and the, they're not playing very well, then the owners might want to. Start thinking about sacking the manager. Wow. Oh, uh, well. Cheers, mate. Do you know what Paul Merson had to say about Farco? It is. Yeah, isn't it? His agent should have got knighted. <laughs> should have got knighted. How did he get that job? Who, <laughs> Farco? Yeah. Well, he was in there. Uh, Why he not? He lost 27 games on the trot at Norwich, didn't they, at the yeah, end of the season? Yeah, but he went to Brush. But he got them out of the, out of the championship twice. Back, That's yeah. what they'll be looking yeah, at. Yeah, but. <laughs> you're not having yeah, but it. That's are you? then. Do you know what I mean? I. <laughs> That's Wrong what one is must look at. No, but you, you got to wait up. I, got, I know you got them out before, but this league's a lot harder. He was at Norwich, where like I mean, mm. they couldn't help but get in the playoffs, and they didn't get in the playoffs. Do you know what I mean? It's all right, you know. Yeah, I, I, I think he's very fortunate. He's, I like him. Don't get me wrong, but he's got the biggest. For me, they're one of the biggest clubs about Leeds, and he's got that job where. You know, without being horrible, it's not like he's just won but 10 Mercy, games on the did he, They need some stability there at a coaching level. They had four yeah. different coaches last yeah. season. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they did. Simon's right. The guy has got them up twice. And he was out in Germany there with Munch and Gladbach. So he's got pedigree. Yeah, he oh, knows, no, he he's got pedigree, league. but he's done well. I mean, because this is a big, big... But big, look, big all he's been looking at is, like, get us out of this division and then we'll yeah. take it from there. Paul Merson is not having Daniel Farr. <laughs> 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 I'm having Daniel Farr. I like him. I, I really like him. Just I not do, for promotion. But I just don't. I just it, not for it's fortunate to get this job. Yeah. You know, for what he done at Norwich at the end. Yeah. What he done at the start of Norwich. Yeah, you know, Portsmouth are not coming for me again, are they? I'm not signing for Portsmouth next week. But you know, I think I was in the team that got them promoted. Let, let us know but if that you was are. A while the back. That was a while back. <laughs> so time moves on. You've been out of the game for 15, I, 20 years. He's right. still been coaching. Let, let, 
I like how Neil Lennon just tried to insert a little bit of good sense into that. He was like, what is he on about? They're all trying their absolute best to talk yeah. him down. Do, do we have anything on what Paul Morrison thought when uh, Sam Allardyce came in at Leeds? Because I don't imagine he was going on about his track mm. record being a long time ago. And what's he done lately? Like, he may have got a... Paul Merson's had his issues, so let's... Um, I didn't understand his point, his, fun. his point about he had a team that couldn't get... Couldn't not get in the playoffs, and then they didn't get in the playoffs. Do you mean because they got all my because they, they got because they won it? And maybe it means he's. Does he mean the first season he was at Norwich, the first so, mid table? But then the two oh, after, yeah, that, maybe the two more recent ones, he did get them up automatically yeah. very but easily. The team that he had in the first season wasn't a team that you wouldn't say no. could not fail to get into the playoffs. It's like so that's why it didn't. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm quite I'm lost. It probably had Russell Martin in it. Come to think of it, yeah, maybe he was well there gone. forever, wasn't he? Hmm. There's a cult that we should. Uh, Start drawing out the coaching tree. That's what people like to do, don't they? I struggle with Russell Martin as, as like a, a forward thinking coach. Does he think coach. he's Russell Osman? Uh, no. Does he Starring think he's an escape to victory? Russell Hobbs? Uh, nice kettles and stuff. Mm. Um, no, I don't know. I think, I know Bielsa wasn't a very good Russell footballer Grant? either. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, if you are hearing some <laughs> rumbling down the line here on the show, they're doing some work in the uh, office space below us. That's, that's, that'll be Russell Grant. Yeah, potentially, yeah. Um, shall we um, silence it? Is, is Russell Grant dead? I was going to say, it's the ghost of Russell Grant. <laughs> you might be but... thinking of Russell Harty. What's <laughs> your problem with Russell Martin? Uh, I don't have a problem with him. I just, I think I just find it difficult to kind of imagine him as a, a kind of a forward-thinking coach when I just remember him as being that Norwich defender. Yeah, it's a few of them. Well, it's like um, the Barnsley manager who absolutely smashed Port Vale over the place as a, a little smidgen of justice for them stealing Leeds City's place in the... Uh, Football League in 1919. Um, remember who that is? Neil Lilla Collins. Neil Lilla Lilla Collins. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to think of um, the player we saw. That I think, that, well, we were dealing with that the other week, weren't we, when we were looking up the heights and dates of birth of the backroom staff of Barnsley. But yeah, he's all like eager. He brings great pedigree from his distinguished playing career. I thought he was all right. He was a good player. but Well, now we're mixing with these EFL types again. Um we should address really the fact that we are in the AFL and we played a game in the AFL yeah. on It was on good Sunday. of Cardiff to turn up with an anonymous manager who we'd never heard of before. Mm. That was nice. That's what it should be. Did we ever like. find out his name or did he, did he go with that one? I think he's uh, Balut, I believe. Bulot, Bulot, Bulo, Bulo. <laughs> yes. Bulo. Um, just before we play the, the Leeds fan feedback mega mix, this is from our TSB Plus members, by the way, so thank you. Just want to um, do a joke for you. Can I do a joke? Yeah, go on then. What do you call a man with a bunch of leaves on his head? Russell. Russell. That's good. Yeah, I'm not going to be mad about this. Uh, three points would have been nice. Two soft goals, poor wing defending. Probably missed a number nine. But we were in the match. We owned the match. And considering the injuries we have, considering um, what we need to keep, right, um, it's there for the taking. And I'm going to take nothing but positives from this. Uh, it's a long campaign. It's great to see the boys back on the pitch playing with passion and with some sort of structure and idea. So just exhilarating in the end, but gee whiz, that first half, that was like getting a sriracha enema administered by the ghost of Victor Orta. Hey, up, lads. Scott, the Kentucky Yorkshireman, broadcasting live from Castleford, Yorkshire. What a match. It was exciting. It was crazy. Somewhat expected to have that rough kind of start with the first match of the season. Allow me to say I'm pro and Padu. Great start to the day. A couple of pints in the south stand with my two boys. Great song about Ampadu. Then it was eat, sleep, leads, repeat. First off, fuck's sake. What is our going wrong with our defence? So spent half time trying to figure out when we lost saw leads win. We realised now it was Forrest. Then second half, a lot better. I thought that uh, Sam looked good. Um, also, I thought that after Coop scored a great goal, I thought Pascal looked better on the left um, of centre defence. Jimmy, fantastic. Wonder if we will keep him. But we keep going. And to score against those sheep shaggers in the last minute was fantastic. Keep the faith. Cheers. Well, I know we didn't win, but... That was quite fun, wasn't it? Archie Gray, he was good. Did some turns, did some passes, lost the ball a bit. Doesn't matter. Charlie Cresswell, he was fun. A few mad runs. 
doesn't matter. And those attackers who are really dribbly and fun, yeah, why not? I liked it. That was the thrust of your match report, wasn't it, Moscow? It was good fun on Sunday. Enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the website if you want to uh, find it, the squareball.net. Thanks for that searing analysis. I've already written it. I don't need to say it again. Um, Are you really selling it to me? I'm, tra- I'm trying to drive traffic to the website. Just read it. <laughs> Go on the website, have a look at it and read it. You're still cross about that, that man, aren't you? No, I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about... Still our, thinking about uh, the, the Russell joke, aren't you? I was a bit confused because I was just looking at Cardiff's team on Sofa Score and I couldn't find Aaron Ramsey, but he's there. Can I just ask Michael, because you put that mega mix together, was the first one Wisconsin Toss? Do you know? Can't remember. Because I'm wondering if I'm starting to um, pick up on the Wisconsin accent. Oh, because okay. cause I started to hear echoes of Jesse Marsh in whatever that, the first person said there. So I wonder if it was Wisconsin Todd. Just little, little twangs of the accent. You're suggesting it should change his voice? Yep. Move to a different state. I did enjoy um, Scott the Kentucky Yorkshireman as well. I don't know if he actually was in Castleford, Yorkshire. Yeah, I like to think that he was. As well. Maybe enjoying Cas Vegas a little bit there. Um, I like I like the the American tendency to list the place name and then the county. I do like it. Castleford, Yorkshire. We knew where you meant. Paris, Texas. Paris, Texas. Yep. Um, should we hear some? What's, what's this next? Uh, championshipy stuff then. Yeah, it was just a recurring theme of lots of people mentioned the championship and uh, kind of a. Oh, it's that familiar feeling. We're, we really are in the championship, aren't we? Sadly so. Hello, championship, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Bloody hell, it's like we've never been away. Yeah, typical sort of championship Leeds game. Same as it was under Bielsa. Um, all the possession, not putting our chances away. And then the opposition go and score their only shots on target in the old match. Taking a point at half-time, though. There's definitely basis there for a for a team that will have a, have a good go at getting promoted. Glass half full, I'd say, after that. Well, that was just very championship wasn't it? All of it. A championship performance, conceded two championship goals, a championship finale, championship officials. It's good to be back, eh? On another minor thing, I know we've got more pressing matters, but how fucking hard is it to get the pre-match marching on together right and on time? We don't even have that bullshit Premier League anthem anymore, and they still can't get it right. Honestly. I'm not going to lie, actually enjoyed that. Um, I mean, it's not the Premier League, but if you look at it, we've got a chance of winning the title. We've got a chance of getting promotion. We've got an aim. What was the aim in the Premier League? Like mid-table, Conference League, UEFA. We're never going to get in the top four, not without state-owned backing. I mean, I don't know. For the first time in, in two seasons, I've actually... I've actually felt something, you know. I've actually, I've had that sick feeling at the bottom of the stomach before the game. I haven't had that in ages. I mean, this is, this is something on on the line here. It's it's great. You'll have to forgive my ignorance, but is the wording on the rule for what constitutes a foul different in the championship? That is a good point. That that you've closed on because it is, isn't it? And the the championship he refs were mentioned there. That boy child. Um, who ref? Who, how old did we decide he was? Eight? Eight-ish. Eight or nine, something he's like that. He's the Doogie Howser of referee. He's getting a go because it's the school holidays, isn't he? Mm. Basically. I think, he's, I think he's about 35. So, um, <laughs> type his match reports up into a Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree, by the way, on the, some of the points raised there. Marching on together, on time. Absolutely no excuse for that. Now we don't have the bullshit Premier League anthem, which I hated, by the way. And the general sentiments about the Premier League, I'm the same. Absolutely do not miss it. I don't want to be in the championship. Mm. It's all it's all very gauche, isn't it, the, the championship? But the, uh, the whole, It's quite depressing, isn't it? Because it's the best league, is the championship, to be in as, as a non-billionaire plaything. Yeah. It's, it's kind of the, the only league you can be in and try to win it. And but, it's, but it's be, no sustainable. Decent. It's no sustainable, though, is it? Yeah, that's the two things. Is one, that it's uh, financially difficult to just be in. Um, and then... Which is weird because when it is such a good league, it should be more marketable. But then um, there's just four too many teams. If it was four less, fewer teams, it would be a lot better because if it just that 46 game season turns what should be a pleasure into a grind. But when you, you look at the teams that we actually get to play, you know, Cardiff, pretty exciting bunch, always beat us, or at least we never beat them. So that's kind of entertaining. And I did resign myself to that at half time. I thought we never beat Cardiff, so it's fine. Yeah. And then who, who else? We've got Birmingham. Good old fashioned club, Trevor Francis, rest his soul, all that kind of stuff. So, and then Tom Brady, yeah, him. 
Um, and then who do we play after that? Sheffield Wednesday are here. Mm. West like, Brom. Yeah, so there's, there's loads of... Like, there's some fine noble clubs there, isn't there? Yeah, and it's kind of a shame that the only reason that they're not uh, in the Premier League is because they're so, like, badly run. <laughs> like, the only the only way that you, you're either... Well, actually, no, I suppose there is the, the middle ground. Like Brighton and Brentford and those sort of teams are, are proving that you sort of can be well run and exist in the Premier League without selling your entire soul. They've gone the gambling millions instead of the petrol millions, haven't they? Um, Whereas in the, in this division, it's like all the teams who are just absolutely chronically badly run um, or, you know, owners are in jail and, like, nobody knows who they... Didn't they when the West Brom fans found out that they're owned by the Chinese government in secret, there was, like, a website. They, they, they'd added up all the... Followed all the lines of their ownership structure and it led back to the... the <laughs> To the to Beijing, the government seat, and they were like, did more effort on finding out who owned their club than EFL ever has. Ever. EFL was well, yeah, that looks all fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just on the refs in the in the EFL, I agree on that point. There is a different standard, isn't it? You notice that mm. more gets let go because that Cooper goal, for example, I thought that's probably going to get ruled out in the Premier League. That have got some twat at Stockley Park sat there pouring over super slow mo footage of it. Has Cooper used his hand in the player's back to get himself up there above him and all that? It's like there's just. It, it takes away that blood and thunder aspect of it that kind of gets the crowd going, doesn't it? It's good and bad, isn't it? Because I think particularly after a couple of years in the Premier League, there were plenty of times we had fouls and I was like, oh, we should have a free kick for that. Yeah. But then I kind of hated it when we were there and it was they were given, being given to Mo Salah every time he went down. I was like, get up. Yeah, there were, fair, there were occasions where... Allow play- Liam Cooper to manhandle you a bit. Yeah, there were occasions where my, my Premier League brain went, that's, that's going to be a foul. And it mm. wasn't given. I was like, oh, that's that's new and exciting. The great bit was when, was it, I can't remember who it was. It might have been Sinister wanted a penalty. And then their defender wanted a foul in like five seconds mm. of each other. And everybody's just like kind of standing in the penalty area going, we all want the whistle to blow. And the referee's just like, nope, just carry on, carry on. Each other, lads. It's all fine. But it did, um, you just made me think then, imagine if we had kept Brendan Aronson for this. Everyone's <laughs> like, what we need to do is we'll go down, we'll get relegated, and then Brendan can spend the summer bulking up and then come back and he'll get stuck into the championship. And then, yeah, look at some of the, the things that weren't given as free kicks in that game and then compared to them to the things that weren't given as free kicks for him in the Premier League um, he was probably the only player who wasn't getting free kicks for for very little in the Premier League the best one was uh, from Sunday was Somerville he ended up trying to get a penalty on the second one but the first one where he kind of rode the tackle across the defender's back and then landed on his feet chased the ball and then felt a nudge in his back and went down he was like I think he had enough by that point it's like alright if I'm if I'm dealing with one rugby tackle, then I should be entitled to a penalty for the next thing that happens. Well, that was pretty exciting, watching him kind of rolling off people's backs. You don't get that in the Premier League. There would be inquests for weeks, everybody, uh, if if that had happened. I do, yeah. to, uh, You're right. And it would have snapped Brendan Aronson in two. Yeah, poor boy. I do, I do enjoy the slightly lower profile. I know we, we get subjected to some god-awful pundits at this level, um, which I'm just refusing to engage with this season at all. Um but um, drilling downstairs, um, as it were. It's like listening to Keith Andrews, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, I was going to say, but I like the fact that there's just not that hyper, hyper analysis about everything. It just seems to be more about the game itself. Alice does pose a good question. Should we just hire a seven-foot striker to stand at the front? I think so. Yeah. What's Veghorst doing? Matt Smith scored on uh, the weekend. <laughs> you just can't let him go, can you, that poor French well, boy? He's there scoring goals. I do enjoy the idea of, the, of A, hiring somebody, um, like an actor, Maybe a stand in or whatever, and just to go up front and stand there and just wait for us to put crosses across. Matt Smith is 34. Is and that he's right? still scoring goals, unfortunately for Salford City, but. Still six foot six, though, he's not shrunk. So that's good. Uh, and um, Still a business genius. Grizzled. He could come and run, he could do, uh, take over from Nick Hammond. On the seven, foot, stri- on the seven foot striker um, tip. Grizzle Championship Bastards are requested by a couple of people, actually, as well, which was the phrase I uh, I employed on the Phil Hay show when we uh, we were talking some weeks back. RIP Phil Hay show, by the way. Well, look, mm. Cardiff have kind of gone down that route, and that's why I was looking at Because I'd completely forgot Aaron Ramsey was in their team. I'd kind of thought that would be a bit of a thing, that he's back in the championship and he'll start bossing things around. But I've just compared his stats for the day to uh, guess which player. Um... Mark Rock. Archie Gray, obviously. <laughs> so it was uh, 44 touches for Ramsey, 84 for Archie Gray. Um, in not much more time, I think it was on for about another 10 minutes, 
um, than Ramsey. And then accurate passes, 20 of 29, 69% for Aaron Ramsey. 54 of 69, 78% for Archie Gray. He got a key pass. Ramsey did not. Four crosses, two accurate from Archie. None and none from Ramsey. And uh, two long balls, neither were accurate from Archie. And Ramsey just didn't even try. Pathetic. Ground. I love a, I love a ground jewel. Um, yeah. Is that I, where they both lay on the grass and start punching each other? Yeah, Ramsey with, did more swords. ground jewels, jewels um, and more arrow jewels. But, uh, Is a ground jewel just a tackle? Yeah, actually, it then starts getting into that possession lost. Archie was worse. But um, but I thought Ramsey did now. So that's, I, I'd actually, that's the end of that. I'd actually uh, genuinely f- forgotten he was playing until he went yeah. off. Yeah. yeah, I had as well. He didn't stand out, did he? That's no. not that and that's the... Kind of, he would probably. I don't know if he fits grizzled. That's maybe just the, his legs as Juventus found to their cost. Um, but Championship bastard certainly, and it make bringing him back. And he will like, oh, he'll, maybe he'll be the talisman. Was it because we're just wrapped up in our own affairs? I don't know. I, I don't did know. enjoy Wedge's comment on Archie Gray. He says he's unbelievably good, like scary good. Like how are we going to keep keep him good? He's far too good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the sort of tantalising thing with Gray is, if we can go up this year, we actually can keep him. Because yeah. when we saw. Fab Delph and Lewis Cook, and you immediately went, "Oh, they're they're like a, f- a level above us." You thought, "Well, we're not going. We're not going anywhere." Look at the rest of the team. Yeah, and I know Archie Gray represents some sweet, sweet FFP profit, but you think you're going to hang on to him for a couple of years at least? Let you know, let him establish himself in the first team, and you know, at least past the age of adulthood. I mean, we are, we are selling him on the back of one performance as well. It might be terrible. <laughs> not selling him. I don't want to sell. Him. I want to keep him. <laughs> he's, he's clearly Definitely. not terrible, though. Is he? He's obviously he's obviously very good. Can we go to Wales? I was just going to say you've got to have some backbone as well. Like if you look at what Brighton are doing now with Moses Casado, where they're saying mm-hmm. to Chelsea it's hundred million or you can't have him, and that's why they're going like, can we just have Tyler Adams for twenty? Um, but that's the where we should have been with Calvin Phillips. Um, we should have had that ability get him on a contract and get him on a and take a stance. But the, the problem is we're always selling from a position of weakness, isn't it? Um, yep, we, so because because we needed money to re-enter the market and probably prop the club up um, at that, in that summer. Um, we accepted money up front, reduced fees. So maybe oh. this is the future of our, because we've been waiting for this aggression in the transfer market to come and maybe it will be aggressively keeping Archie Gray. We were talking the other week about... Um, you know, it's all like, don't change the stadium name. I never will. That'll never happen. Same with Archie Gray. We've got to do that. They're offering 200 million. No. And it's like really shout it down the phone as well. Like, like what's the loudest fax anybody's ever sent to turn down uh, an offer? A loud fax. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, they um, are pretty. If you ever were receiving a fax and you would pick up the phone while it was going through, you get all the, the noise. You could listen to the fax. Well, let's go to Wales. Um, we heard from the the Championship podcasts at the start of the show there with their predictions. We're going to do a bit more on predictions um, on the member show, aren't we? We've got some mm-hmm. more clips over on that this week for members. Um, we'll also now hear from the Cardiff fans and find out what they thought of us as well. But before we do that, let's have a, should we have a musical interlude. What's this, Michael? It's their intro. They've got an intro. I don't know. I don't know if it's someone who's on the pod or someone who's done it for them. But yeah, they've got their own little tune. Oh, that's fancy, isn't it? They may not be that smart and they may not be that pretty But they like to talk about Cardiff City It's the view from the ninny and with views from the ninny And not shoes from the ninny and the view from the ninny That's really good, isn't it? I like that. Yeah. One of us could have done that if we could sing or play the guitar. Do they change it every time? I'd not listen back. Because that shoes joke is good, but if every time you listen to mm. the show, it'd be like, oh, shoe joke again. Mm. I mean, it's not like us. We'd never labour a joke, would we? For example, God no. No, we, we don't. We don't play it at the start of every show. <laughs> well, I do. The... We just fill the show up with it. Yeah, you, well, you never know it's coming. I mean, if they did that, if they were just suddenly, like halfway through a bit of analysis of Cardiff versus whoever, and then just suddenly went shoes. I think the um, the backlash on the Farker voice has already started. By the way, I think. We're, yeah, we're, I, I mean, two minds. Has it lost its potency now? I, I sort of feel bad about it now. Yeah, and I do. I do genuinely like him. Yeah. I always did. Yeah. But he's, he does have a funny voice as well, so what are you going to do? <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe you should phase it out. What's the problem with it? Undermines him. It kind of How's it undermine him? <laughs> kind of out- <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> People will be like, oh, is that... Is just, he's just talking in his daft voice. We'll be back with the 49ers going like, no, we are not sacking him. We might be 24th in the championship. No, never. It's like, yeah, but... 
that guy, Michael Norman, keeps doing his funny voice. He's got to go. He's got to go. <laughs> I don't want You're anyone... undermining him. I, I don't want... I, I want to know what I mean. In, 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 next in, press, it's he's undermining the, him in the eyes of the fans, isn't it? It's like you're you, you poking fun at him and we've got to take it all very seriously. I would have kept my job. But there was somebody on a podcast who's been very nasty about me. Yeah, I suppose I won't want anyone who listens to this, I won't want their opinion of him to change as a result of of that. Mm. Oh, if we... So if we lose, like, three games in a row, are you going to come back, like, twice as hard? Yeah. Unbelievable hard. Yeah, um, unbelievably hard. <laughs> so, you, so, and basically, that's it. We've, we're establishing that you have, like, his future in the job. We were saying before with that guy from the whatever tier thing... The, um, if they Whatever lose, team. if they lose some games, the pressure might be on. The owners will want to get up. Are you actually going to be the, the vanguard of that? That if you feel like the season isn't going very well, you're going to be like, it's be like a when the judge used to do the death sentence. He used to put a black cap on. You'll be like, I am afraid. I'm afraid the time has come that I must start doing the voice again. <laughs> Things have got that bad with Leeds. We're playing that badly. We haven't won mm. for weeks. I'm going to have to start doing the voice again. And it was like, oh. You could just see the ground. It's like he's he's like he's standing on a. Wasn't it a black cloth? Like he's standing on a, a pillow of moles out of pillows. <laughs> what? Um, I couldn't think of anything else. It was a it was a black cloth that the judge used to put on his head, yeah. not a black cap. Because I had a vision of him like putting on a baseball cap then in his courtroom. Yeah, if you put if something of cloth put on your head, you'd call it a hat. You'd say, you'd say, oh, Daniel's using that free World Cup fanzine as a hat. A cap. On my head. As a cap. You said cap. It's just that a vision of a cap baseball. Cap is just another way for just, I just imagined a judge in a baseball cap, but never mind. Anyway, this is what they thought of us. 2-0 at half time. We were always going to have to deal with the kind of lead storm in the second half. But, you know, we'll, we'll get to the goals. But it felt like we weathered the storm quite well, didn't it? I know Alnwick made some saves. There were a couple of moments where they got to the line. But a lot of the time we kept them at bay. And, I, you know, and I, I think that was down to Gutas and McGuinness, right? Their defensive play at times was... Pretty phenomenal. Yeah, it's just a pity that we conceded so early in that second half. Yeah. Like we just didn't give enough chance to build that frustration, to build that nerves in the home end. I think like going into half time, chatting with people like around when you're having a drink in the concourse, I think a lot of people were like, We're gonna lose this three two. It they had that air about it. So I think I think we did weather a lot of it well. I, I think we give the ball away far too much at we times. We did, yeah. We made it easy for them to just come at us with wave after wave of attack. And hopefully we can improve on that. But yeah, I thought Gutas was fantastic. I thought McGuinness was as well. Um, and we were playing a quality side. They deserved a draw at the end of the day, didn't they, Leeds? Like, yeah. We can't really like be too hard, to, feel too hard done by by it. But it would have been nice to nick a win out of there. The view from the Ninian. Great bunch of lads. They're quite nice, actually. I quite liked them. Yeah. I was hoping they'd be more unreasonable. Mm. And sort of say we were cheated a win or treated a point out of them or something but they went yeah it's fair enough yeah disappointing what were you chuckling at at the start of that muscle? I was because I completely got something wrong oh, I okay. thought I'd got something when he said it's very irrelevant now when they said <laughs> uh, we knew that we would we had to expect the lead storm in the second half my mind went I thought that's the name of the ice hockey team. Oh, okay. Because if there was going to be lads with sticks, but it's the Leeds Knights. It's the um, Manchester Storm play ice hockey. Um, so and the, dr- the drilling has continued downstairs, which is uh, which is great. I don't. I'm not sure what it is downstairs. I think that might be going directly to my leg. That's, <laughs> that sounds very near. <laughs> the doctor's sawing your leg off. Right. Well, let's let's play another clip then and shout over the um, over the racket. Um, what, so what is this this next one then from uh, the view from the Ninian, sorry? Well, I saw reports on Twitter that there were carpets in the south stand, new hand dryers in ladies' toilets, but by the sounds of this, the away end is still not the best. Anyone who was there at Leeds yesterday um, and enjoyed what can only be described as the sauna of the bar, is that the hottest bar at an away end you've ever been in, Tom? Yeah, you hit a wall of heat. It was mad. You'd come down the steps from the seats and it dug this wall of like, yeah. just warm air hit you. And then they refused to open the, the doors on the side to let a bit of air in. It was packed in there like sardines in your, and then the, the watered down beer in the, like the paper cups or whatever they were giving out as well. It was a shambles down there, really. It, it's, it's clearly a ground that has, is lacking a bit of love. You can see it had former glories, but that hasn't been started up in a long, long time. It's a long time, has it? Not, not at all. It was grim down there. Whoa, chucking piss at the Ninian. I grim. Mean, you, the, the show's called The View from the Ninian. I mean, like, Ninian Park, chucking bottles of piss at Leeds fans. That was a bit rough and ready, wasn't it? Mm. They did They did actually report that some 
there was some pelting of uh, of bottles after the from Cardiff fans at Leeds fans. Oh, my my mum my mum was in front of just in front yeah. of the Cardiff fans as well. I hope she didn't get, bottles. Yeah, she was chucking them back. I must admit, I was quite surprised they uh, they put Leeds fans there. Yeah, normally it's only the nice away fans. Mm. This, they, they allow that to be shared with. I like the idea of the the hottest bar that they've ever been in. It's you ever done that when you've been like I don't know you've gone abroad somewhere maybe on a city trip and you you go down some stairs off a courtyard and it's a nightclub underground and it's mm. in the in the you know, vaulted ceilings and you just get that wall of heat as you go down. Newcastle the Newcastle away end's very hot when I went there a couple of years ago. Cause well, heat rises and you're it, up there in the stratosphere, know, right? And it was right at the start of the season and you've got like. A Thousand Leeds fans who just walked up about forty flights of stairs, all, all panting, all like giving off body heat. It was uh, it was very very sweaty. Oh up there. wow, That's, you're really selling it. Really heady aroma. <laughs> I can confirm new hand rise in the West End. Was your bit of the was your bit of the West End red hot? No, oh, interesting. It's a cold stand, um, and I didn't spend much time on the concourses. It was mostly outdoors. It was fine, but yeah, because that was always the biggest, like the the, the main cause of a bottleneck one is that nobody ever works out that both doors open so everybody's kind of waiting for a a, a, a queue forms in both directions and then you have to try and open the door into somebody's face um so that's always got to be negotiated but then also people waiting very while the hair dryers <laughs> hand dryers. dryers just drain your hair basically like cough on somebody's hands to do so but now actually uh, very fast, efficient, brand new. Still only two of them. They could have maybe taken the opportunity for uh, just put another wire off one and have a, a row of them. But two, Sounds two like fast risk. ones is uh, it's is a sort of wiring. One. It's a sort of wiring you do that. It's like I'm not going to plumb in separate. Have you assessed it. That's fine. No, I'd be yeah. all right if I just run a cable from that one to that one to that one. It'd be all right. I'll just Sorry. daisy chain them all. Um, this might be your your Twitter thread of shame that has caused these refurbs. I mean, I would hope that maybe the new owners have just had a look around. <laughs> <and> <laughs> been like Jesus yeah. Christ, <laughs> what is this place? That, was, that, that guy who does the funny voices, he was... Uh, <laughs> he's also <laughs> mentioned this yeah. pie on the wall. If we, if we can clean he's, that... He's very important in our <laughs> thinking. If we can sort the hand dryers out, maybe he'll go easy on the manager and stop doing the voice. <laughs> and he's like, yes, please, please, anything to make him stop doing it. I will pay for these hand dryers myself. I will install them. Now you're doing the voice. And well, exactly. Him. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to keep him in his place. <laughs> can't get him too complacent. Uh, you're, in, you're on a good... Um... You're in a good mood today, Moscow. I like it. Uh, let's keep it going then and talk about Neil Warnock as we close out this show then, um, <laughs> shall we? Do you want to hear the clip first or talk about Huddersfield? Well, I just will talk about Huddersfield first because I, I was, just was looking on YouTube to see what there is of him going around. There's some post-game stuff. Normal. It was pretty normal for him. But uh, I did look because they've obviously had the pre-season Cornwall thing that they always bloody do. Came as a surprise, yeah. Mm, they played, um, I don't Which, know Just for the benefit it. of anybody who doesn't know this, it's because Warnock lives down there, doesn't he? Yeah. And... He took us down there on pre-season, just so it's in his own backyard, basically, and he can have and he, a barbecue. And I was going to say, he seems to think this barbecue that he has has got some mythical benefit. He thinks it's like <laughs> lords or something that you can take the... Uh, people will, will ingest his holy sausages and um, have a nice... Oh, wow. A ...good season, win yeah. promotion. Have you ever ingested one of... Anyway, um, <laughs> they finished out their Cornwall tour with a 13-1 win, which is good, isn't it? Oh, they did well, then. They're in the they were playing in the 10th tier... Yeah, that's how seriously it was taking preseason, which is the same as like so. You put some names on the yeah, sheet, Fackley, yeah. Fackley, which is my local club. Yeah, yeah. Ecclesill just up the road. Yeah, Garforth. So, and then as well. So, where was their first game of the season? Plymouth, Plymouth of away. Course, yeah. So he's dragged Huddersfield all the way down to his back garden for preseason. Made him camp there. Sent them all back up. Do you think he travelled with them back to Huddersfield? Of course he fucking didn't. Be Jeppo. So, and then they've had to come all the way back down again. And do you think he even went to training like before the Plymouth game? No. So he'll have been there and then they they lost. They got soundly beaten. Um, and then where have they all gone? They've all gone back to Huddersfield. And where's he gone? Home. Yeah. And he, he even, I think we mentioned this on uh, Saturday, he was on the Football League highlights. Said, I'm only really doing this as a favour to the owners, you know, because... They they were saying if they uh, if they brought a new manager in who doesn't know the lads because they haven't got the money to to bring any new lads in so it could ruin everything they could ruin this club if they brought a new manager in so as a favour I said I I sort of out I love it so so obviously if he's doing it as a favour to the owner I'm not bloody going up there though because I have got a lovely house down here well he has been in Yorkshire. Uh, in between games which makes a change because he wasn't here very often when he was in charge of Leeds was he he's gone to Sheffield. Um, and he's watching golf. Of course he's gone to Sheffield. <laughs> he's what he's doing. So that's where this clip comes from. So he's made the even, journey up for that. Even though he's talking about golf, he's just 
he's just so worn up. Is it pure essence of Warnock? Mm. But really enjoying it, are you? In fact, I only came to do nine holes this morning, but and he was two behind Alex, and now he's like four, three or four up. So I thought I better stop, even though it's killing me. I thought I better carry on rounding with him. It's a good walk, this isn't it? This course. It's a good walk. It's a great walk, though. It's uh, you look at the condition of the course, all the, oh, the whole place. It's fantastic. Yeah. How impressive has Alex been today? He's been brilliant. I don't, I don't believe it. The only, the only time he had a bad shot, and I went for a coffee. <laughs> So I, I don't even go for a coffee now. <laughs> and you've also, I've heard, got someone in the pro shop you know very well here. Well, my son, yeah, my yeah. son, my son William, uh, he, he's been here for, for a, a, almost a couple of years now, and he, he loves it. And he's, he's, I think he's plus two now. He's, you know, he only, only started playing golf two years ago, so he's done really, really well. But he, he said to me, if you want to see some golf, Dad, come and have a look at these guys. He said, they're not even on the tour. They're not even on the full tour, are they? Know, they're, they're, they're incredible, aren't they? Yes, they are. Oh, they are. <laughs> Jay is pure Warnock, you're right. Yeah, his son. Is he, do you think he's paying his, co- his course fees, his green fees there? Or? Do you remember his son? He was a footballer, wasn't he, a while ago? Like when he got, a, he got a contract at Cardiff, didn't he? Ah. Do you remember who was manager at the time? Was it... I'm have a, have a think. good think. Have a good long think. I'm th- was it dad? It was his dad, yeah. <laughs> his dad gave him a contract at Cardiff, but no one else picked him up after yeah. that. It was, it was Cardiff, like, uh, Willie, Willie Mackay's boys, after they left Leeds. Yeah, he got, they went to Doncaster, didn't they? Uh, and they, then, they were from Doncaster. Oh, the right, yeah, yeah. They were at Doncaster, came to Leeds, came to then went to Cardiff, right. who were in the Premier League I at the time. I think there was like a, maybe like a non-league trip in between. Like we released them into non-league mm. and then they were signed by Premier League Cardiff. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Seeing potential that everybody else was missing. Mm. Yeah. Wow. What a journey. But we know we know how generous Warnock is because, as you said, he's, he's doing that job as a favour. He's doing it as a favour. And, uh, and, and a handsomely paid favour, probably. There you go, then. That's uh, propaganda, what's being said in the football world um, this week. Can we uh, can we have some City action? We've got to keep in touch with like the Premier League and what's going on up there. I did check. They didn't do a live watch along for the Charity for Shield. For the Charity Shield. Is it beneath them now, is it? Must have been. City extra. I checked it. They, they Flames did, in the chat. They did one oh, after, that. and it was also, it was just the younger brother and um, an Irish fella. I like the two of them together being mank. Right. So and they were they were because they was after the game. They played like they've, they've done what Man City do, which is sort of play a semi reserve team there, haven't they, for the tournament? Yeah, they were sort of, they were playing it down. They're like, oh, we're not bothered. They were doing a live watch along for a plane landing <laughs> at Manchester. They'd taken the uh, the plane tracking things to the next level, and they they'd had somebody. I don't know if it was already like a channel that uh, films and broadcasts planes landing at Ringway. But they, Ringway. they were they were watching that <laughs> one for the kids, assuming that this private jet that was coming in had their new signing on it, and they were all like, "Oh, it's coming in there, it's landing, it's landing. <laughs> right. planes in the chat, <laughs> planes in the chat." But yeah, they'll be they'll, they'll be back. Yeah, so we are, we are on the propaganda. Premier League. The Premier League hasn't started yet. Yeah, has it not? No, I, I don't really keep tabs on it anymore. Yeah, no. Is there anybody left in the Premier League? Liverpool haven't got a team anymore, have they? Have they not? They've all gone. All gone, yeah. I've, gone I have taken, I've taken my series link off Match of the Day on Sky. I've, I've got rid of that. I don't need that anymore. To be honest, I didn't watch it last year either, for the most part. Yeah, no, I didn't want to know. <laughs> come back from a game, I, I was just, it was just, nope. taking up, just taking up hard drive space. But I refuse to get get on board with the uh, the AFL hype train. I'm not recording the highlights on ITV4. It's beneath me, quite frankly. <laughs> Fair Quite enough. enough. Uh, that wraps up propaganda. But yeah, we will keep we'll keep tabs on all the sort of the, the people we discovered over the last year. Because um, we'll be seeing them next year, won't we? <laughs> of course we will. Well, did you not hear what... Um, our EFL the good one the, the good one the good one said was it not the top 20 that, yeah that's the way just, it is. I will just double check not the top 20 great bunch of lads alright we'll see you soon the square ball podcast 